Hey guys, this is Peter, and as you know, I use T-Mobile Home Internet, and I also use Plex. And in the last video, we found a way to get it to you, well, using a static IP. And what well, one of you reached out to me, this was from DJ, and he was telling me about, well, he's using Jellyfin, and but that is a, it is a piece of software that's like Plex. And he said, although he doesn't have T-Mobile Home Internet, he does have something he wanted to show me and how good Jellyfin was because it has DVR capabilities that are free. So I thought, well, that's pretty neat. I wanted to take a look at it, so he shared it with me. And I noticed there was a component that he had in his solution that uh, I wanted to try because it looked pretty cool. And you know what? I thought, will that work with T-Mobile Home Internet? And, you know, he didn't know because he doesn't have T-Mobile Home Internet. But uh, as it turns out, it does. And it solves the generic problem of, well, I guess the carrier grade NAT or the double NAT solution. See, the problem is that your IP address kind of identifies you to the internet. And when it changes, well, it can be painful. <laughs> we all have dynamic addresses, but when you have a telco based one, it changes a lot. So it can really mess stuff up. There is a service that I'm gonna show you. It is pretty neat. So thank you to DJ. I'm going to hit F11 and get out of there. All right. It is called uh, No IP. And No IP is a, DN a DDNS, a dynamic DNS uh, program. You could sign up for it for free. In fact, this is how it goes. You can get it for free for one month with one host name. That's all we need. That's exactly where we are. I haven't paid a dime for this yet. However, I'm kind of tempted because I don't have to set it up every 30 days and they're only looking for $1.99 a month. I want to make sure that this program stays around, so I'm thinking of doing it. I do have a coupon code for you, so follow my link, and there's a coupon code that'll take your $19.99 and make it $16.99 for a year. So if you try it out and you like it and you think, I love this, I want to make sure this stays around another year, I'd say drop 16 bucks their way. Anyway, let's get right to it. So I'm using my T-Mobile standard gateway. Why? Because I get awesome signal on and it's really fast, and it's what you guys have. So we don't want to have to spend more money if we don't have to. Now, when I use my better router, it's right over there. Which one is that? It is, oh, the Invisigig. When I use the Invisigig, I'm able to actually pass the data through and get another level of niceness. So I'll get to that. But what I want to do right now is make it work today with my existing system. Why? Because I get some killer speeds out of this. This is what I was getting. I have a 20 millisecond ping, six, over 600 right now, and uh, 100 up. It's the 100 up that I care about. See, if my kids want to watch movies from my Plex server, they're going to be, well, pulling, I'm going to give them 12 megabit up each. So even if I had two of them pulling at the same time, and if I was on my phone at the same time, I can still totally support it. That's neat. Let me just tell you a little bit about my system. I am using T-Mobile's home internet. I have the, the one that looks like, well, the Nokia version, but I imagine it would work just the same with any of them. So whether you have the Arcadian or even the, the new Sagemcom or uh, you know the, the, even the newer one that's supposed to be coming out, they're all gonna work the same. They all have this carrier grade NAT issue. Now I use it as a modem only and I have a router. I got this, uh, a uh, well, back in June. And it works delightfully. So I don't try to get that can to serve my internet. I use my own uh, access point or my own router. And uh, that plays a key role in this whole setup. In fact, my router so happens that it is aware of this uh, no IP program. I'm going to show you how to set it up and how to get it working. And hey, if you're a gamer, it looks like it's gonna solve that too. So I'd be really interested if you would, uh, if you put gamer, you know, at the beginning of your comment, let me know if it works. You still have to open up the ports, but it should be tunneling through now and you should have no none of that double NAT or carrier grade NAT issues. So let's get into it. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to your router. And if you don't know where your router is, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how to find it. Just go to command, command.prompt, Type IP config, and guess what? There's your gateway. That's your router. Mine happens to be 172.16.0.1. So it's a little private address that's on your network, 172.16.1. So if I type in 172.16.0.1, ah, what happened to my dot? Dot, there we go. 
it asks to log in and we let it log in. Now, the first thing I'm going to have you do with your router, and it'll work with so many different routers, but if you happen to have a Netgear, it works so neat because, well, it, you'll see. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is, I have steps here, is reserve my IP addresses. Yes, my router automatically gives IP addresses to everything, but we want to make sure that it always gives it, so it doesn't break in the future, that it always gives certain devices the same one. So I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, advanced setup and then LAN setup. And down here, I can reserve IP addresses. Look, your printer, it always should have the same IP address. Just do that. That way when you, uh, well, you install the printer drivers and find your printer, and then they have a power outage or something goes wrong, guess what? Your printer will come back up and it'll work again because it's at the same address. So that's what we want to do. And we want to do the same thing, well, for my computer so I can tunnel out, and for my TV tuner and for the server, the server that has my Plex running on it. So. All of those things we just go ahead and do. It's so easy. If you have an Xbox 360 or if you have a PlayStation, what you're going to do is just click on this and it takes a second. I clicked on it. I'm waiting. Okay. It lists all of your different devices and all you need to do is click on the one that you want to share. Now it would say Xbox on here somewhere and I would click on it and go ahead and fill it out. It knows the Mac address of all of these different devices. So that's good. Uh, and what it does is it says every time you reboot Mr. Router or Mrs. Router, whatever, if you see this MAC address, give it this value. Don't just go willy nilly. I want these ones to have th these things. And it does it and it does a great job. That's step number one. The step number two is port forwarding. Now that's under advanced, advanced, double advanced. <laughs> you know, we're getting advanced when you have to do it twice. Port forwarding. Now, the port that you want to forward for Plex is always the same. It's uh, 342, uh, well, 3200, 32,000, 32,400. Yeah, 32,400. That's what it always is. And that's what I set mine up as. And boom, it works. So that's another quick step. Last step is go ahead and go down to uh, UPnP and turn it on. Guess what? It will automatically fill out all this stuff. It will just work. So much nicer if it just works. Okay, so what is this dynamic DNS and what do you have to do with it? Well, it is a free program, we can, a free service. And we can sign up for it, but if you find that this is solving something major for you, you may just want to sign up for it and pay for it. I can think of no cheaper way to do it. I was paying $3 a month, I still am, for a static IP from T-Mobile. And I thought that was a great deal. I'd gladly do it, except for this is even cheaper. So this is like $1.60 a month. Anyway, uh, I do like that. So here we go. All you need to do is click sign up. I already did. So I'm going to click sign in. It asks for my credentials. And it brings me in. Now, what it's doing is your dynamic, um, your IP address is changing all the time. It happens if you don't have a static. So what this does is it keeps track of it. In fact, they have a little program that you can install on your PC that's called a duck or a dynamic update client. It'll notice it keep pinging like, has my IP address changed? And if it is, well, then it, it makes note of it. However, if you have a router that's approved and has a DDNS service on it, like the Netgear one, let me go back there for a second because I'm going to go to advanced, advanced, dynamic DNS. Here it is. Uh, what you're going to do is, look, there's three options to do it. You can either work with Netgear somehow or dyn.com. But no IP has been around since 2001. So uh, they're actually known for doing this and solving this issue. So click on the button that says Dynamic DNS Service and uh, then click on No IP and then put in your credentials, what your the name that you picked is, and then what's your what your login uh, is. What it's going to do is every time your router sees its IP address change, it's going to go out to this DNS server and go, hey, I'm over here now. And if it changes again, it goes, wait, we're over here now. So that's what's going to go on. So when I try to make my Plex work, even on my phone, I have Wi-Fi turned off. I feel pretty darn confident that we're going to be looking at some movies in a second. 
Boom, boom, boom. Bing. So I'm over 5G right now. And look, it's all ready to play a movie. And I'm going to show you. Wi-Fi is off. Wi-Fi is off. Oh, and I've tried. I have multiple. There, I have multiple T-Mobile services and uh, or modems. You know that. I unplugged one and stuffed another one in there and counted to 10 and went over and tried it. And it gave me an error for a second, it cleared itself and started playing. And I went, wow, that is exactly what I wanted to do. Oh, check out this. So once you get this set up for no IP, yeah, here we go. Once you get it set up and you have your own name, click on this button. Yeah, device configuration assistant. So here's what you're gonna do. All you need to do is select a host name. You only have one and that's the one you just created. There it is. Click on next step. Tell it about what kind of router you have. I have a Netgear, but guess what? It'll work with TP-Link. It'll work with so many of them. But the one that I'm gonna help you with, I love when people go, do it again for TP-Link. It's like, I, I can't, I don't have one. All right, now we have to let it know the software and device that we have. I totally recommend this Orbi by Netgear that I have. This, this thing is, just to plug it for a brief second, I'll put a link to it below. This is a lifesaver. So it will take your, take your internet, your T-Mobile internet, and broadcast it around your house like any other router would. But this other one on a separate channel, on a back channel, it uh, is able to communicate and they spread out your network. So even though you're walking around the house, you don't have to have two different logins. You simply just have a larger area and you can add another one on there if you want to. You can have a two pack, you can have a three pack, you can add a satellite unit. It is neat and I really like this. I've been thrilled with it, I think it's great. Okay, but once we add, now what's the software device we wanna do? Well, it's a Plex server, right? There it is, Plex Media Server, boom. Click on that and it'll set it up, it'll know what ports are there. But I got really interested about gaming, so I typed in PlayStation. Look at station, show all. Look at all these games that have already been defined. Now, I'm not a gamer. I mean, I'm not a console gamer. So if you if you had a problem with this, I really would be interested if you just leave a comment down below and write gamer. And if you tried it out, what your results were. Did it work for you? Because that'll be huge. All the gamers will be looking for your comment. So please leave one down below. Uh, if you pick something like Street Fighter, all right? I just pick Street Fighter randomly. But uh, that's a good game. Then you click next step. Do you have a computer running on the network? I want to say no, even though I do. I don't want to use that duck thing because I have a router that'll do it for me. Can I log into my router? Yes, you saw me log in. So it's going to say, go to your firmware and open up this port. And look at, there's the ports you need to open to play this game. And then you also need the DDNS, well, to make it work as well. And if you do this successfully, it should work. Now for Plex, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna type in Plex server, Plex media server. When I click next and next again, do I remember no, yes, next. Look at the port it tells me, 32400. Yep, there it is, 32400. That's the one that Plex uses. So what I did on my Plex, let's see it. Now this one's running on my PC. So it's not running on my NAS drive, but when I click here, it's gonna say, when I say remote access, you're gonna say, wait, ah, all right. It's communicating and it sees it, but there it is. It, yeah, it said, hey, wait a second, we're on the PC now, so it dropped it. But look at this, that is my private IP address. This is the uh, IP address that I reserved for it. Remember in the reservations of the, the Netgear? I reserved this one for it as a static on my network and I gave it the same port. I manually set up the same port that they use on my public. That is my public IP address right now and there's the port. So when I click on retry, it'll go ahead and say yes. But what I would need to do is set it up for my PC with that port open and that, that would work great too. Yeah, just let me show you that because that's neat. So here I am in my, my Orbi. Or I guess my, here, I'll go back to the beginning, sign in again. What you want to do is reserve your PC, right? So advanced setup, LAN setup. 
And yeah, here's where it got that uh, Fairwood server at 17.16.07. That is my, that was the one I statically set up. I also sat statically set up my PC. Now, if I wanted to open that port on my PC, I could because there it is. So all you would need to do is go to advanced, advanced, port triggering, or port forwarding. And I want to port forward. Let's see. Yeah, what I would be doing is opening this port for a different device and I would get a conflict. But if I was doing it on my PC, let's just go ahead and show you. Yeah, and of course it's gonna give me a conflict, but we're okay with that because we know it's gonna happen. We're calling it in advance. So let's see, the service name, I'm gonna call it Plex PC style. Ah, where's my typing skills? It's a, there it is, and it's 32400. And it's also, yeah, I'm gonna use the exact same port, make my life easy. And all I would do is find my PC in here which is called, no, 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 no. Always in a video, it does this. Here it is, this is me at 21. That's the one I reserved. If I click apply right now, it's gonna say, hey, two ports are going to two different devices. Yeah, you know, the same port's going to two different devices. Oh, that's a good po point. I could totally change it on this device. I could change it to be 3200 and change it to be 3200 and then of course set it up. And that would probably work. So there you go, guys. This is neat. I want to get some gamer feedback on this. This totally works. I have tested it extensively. I've uh, got my daughter. She's watching videos on it uh, from Chicago. My son's watching videos on it from New York. Uh, I have plenty of up speed because this is its a fast solution. I have 100 up. Um, and uh, this is just using the standard gateway. I'm using it as modem only, which I've talked at, at nauseum about, and using it with this router and getting some good results. I mean, it really just works. Here's my phone again. I would put it up on the screen, but I can't because it, the Wi Fi is off, and that's how it attaches to the screen. So, that. Bing. So, there it is filling out. I don't know why that first one isn't filling out. Oh, William Defoe movies. There we go. So there are the, the movies. And if literally I just pick something and click resume or play, it should be playing for you. I'm looking for the glare. There you go. That's not over my Wi-Fi, guys. This is over, over my cellular account. Anyway, guys, there you go. That's how you can get rid of the double NAT situation. I'm really anxious to hear from you gamers if this indeed works for you. Uh, that one game that I picked at random, I can't believe it had so many ports to open, but uh, hey, that's that game. I, I want to hear about some other real Call of Duties and that kind of stuff. Anyway, guys, hey, let, leave a response, what you tried out, if it worked or not, and any other details you want. See you in the next one. Talk to you soon.